cheap rope. It's just rotted on me, so I need. Well, of course, I was pulling the firewood with it. But it broke, so I need to replace it. Better rope. I hung the beer with. You want to go for a hike, don't you? I don't know what you're doing. No? very well on the dirt in spots. This is a birch tree that I cut down right there where you saw it, saw it on the camera. So right behind the cabin. That died. Birch trees don't last very long. They're one of the pioneer species. So after that fire 100 years ago or whatever it was, those in the red maples grew up fast in the balsam firs. But they're short-lived, so they're all starting to. Die. Well, a lot of them from that area era are dying. So that was 100 feet behind the cabin. It was leaning away, so it wasn't in danger of hitting the cabin. But there's another one there leaning away as well. I'm going to take that down. Birch rots really fast because that birch bark is really waterproof. So what happens is the bark stays upright and then the wood rots inside because the bark's actually holding the water in. So the tree rots and soaks up a lot of moisture. So uh, you have to get them pretty quick or they're no good for firewood. Usually you're better off cutting them down live as soon as they start showing some signs of disease. And chaga ironically is one of those diseases that 
is killing it. It's a parasite. So when you see chaga, it's funny because people say that you're harvesting it sustainably. I guess sustainably in that if you left some for somebody else, but the tree is on its way out. It is dying. So if you cut that tree down, use it for firewood, and use the chaga for, for medicine, that would be a good use of the tree. But if you wait until the tree actually dies, the chaga dies as well, and then doesn't have the medicinal properties anymore. And it's just good for like a tinder. So this is in pretty good shape, I think. Probably closer to the top, it's not so great. I'm going to split some up. It's good, um, quick, hot. Uh, fast burning firewood that's good for uh, cooking in a wood stove. So I'm going to cut up, uh, split up a bunch fairly small so that it dries pretty quickly and then use that for, for cooking. It um, needs to be separated so I'm kind of keeping separate piles everywhere of cooking wood versus heat wood. You know, high BTU wood like oak and ash, hard maple, sugar maple. That stuff actually you know, burns really slow. In fact, I had a, had a 14 hour fire in there the other night and still coals in, uh, after 14 hours. So that's great for keeping the cabin hot or warm overnight without it being too hot. This stuff burns really hot so the fire gets, fire box gets really hot, the whole uh, wood stove gets hot. Really good for burning or for uh, cooking, especially like boiling water or something and uh, doing the, uh, the canned venison that worked out well but it just burns out fast, dies down, no coals. So that's no good for overnight heat. So anyway, let's see what it looks like. We've got lots of all over the property. In fact, I found a few that I'm gonna test for uh, canoe quality. So I'd like to make a birch bark canoe. So I've got some that are really good diameter and straight, like a 20 foot section almost. Not a couple of them that are straight enough just to have to see if the bark is sound enough and has good bending quality. Let's see if I can do that. Yeah, that's soft. It's got some moisture in it. Yeah, because it's cold enough that would be frozen. Yeah, that one's really soft. We should cut it into split it into like five pieces. One after this. Yeah, that's all moisture there and some bug damage. But it'll dry out, it'll burn. Basically campfire wood now. <laughs> Stuff you get at the campgrounds always smokes rather than burns. That's why it's actually a lot of it's probably dead stuff. It's full of moisture. So I'm not gonna cook with this anytime soon. I'm gonna put it aside to dry more. Nice and cold. 